What I want to do now is have a look at how you do that, how you follow the dots around. Right? Um, I notice most folks here have got frets or lines where the frets are marked on their guitars. And sometimes people will refer to the notes as to what fret they're on. Usually, always, that's what people refer to the notes, right? But I don't, because mine doesn't have any frets, and I just, it's, just, it's a not a musical way to reference the notes, you know? Um, so, what we want to do today is look at a different way to talk about them. When you, when you go up and play that note there on the, where the second dot is, right? And play your whole, play all three of them, and do that. Straight away you can hear, yeah, up there where the second dot is. it. Yeah, I want you to rely on your ear as much as possible, yeah? Straight away you can hear you've gone to a, a different space, right? It's a new chord, it's a, it's a whole different part of the, the song, right? That particular one there is called the four chord, which is called the four chord, because especially on these things where you're tuning them up different keys all the time, if you call it a C and then you tune it to an A and then it now it becomes a D and you know, Let's just call it the four, it's always the four, we'll call it the four. And the four does that, it sounds like that. If that's the one, when we're open and playing the one, we'll call it the one. That's the four. Slide up to the next dot now, it'll sound like that. That's the five. Yeah? So have a listen to what happens when you go five, four, one. say 12 bar blues, everyone nods their heads and knows, knows what I'm talking about. Yeah? yeah. All right, well we're just going to run through and make sure that everyone can, can play that and reference reference them via these numbers, right? Um, you can play that groove that I was playing there if you want, or you can just play straight down. Doesn't matter, you're not plugged in, so <laughs> doesn't really matter what you play. Right, but we're just going to all see if we can play in time and just run through a 12 bar blues, right? A nice and sort of medium tempo. One, two, three, four. So it's four bars on the one. framework when you're playing a blues mostly you'll, you'll hear that a few times if you're hanging around here for the rest of the day I imagine that's that's your framework that you then put whatever song you want to put under there right or whatever tune or riff or whatever the way that you do that is we can talk about scales or we can I prefer to talk about individual sounds right because we're making music here it's about sound yeah? When you're playing any sort of music, whether it's, you know, um, Brenda Beck concertos or, you know, Muddy Waters, it's all about, it's all about taking the listener somewhere, yeah? So you're creating some tension, you, you, you're giving them something that's a bit interesting, and then you're resolving that tension, relaxing it a bit, right? The main notes, that, well, there's a couple, but the one I want to look at today is this note here on the third fret. The first dot. There. Straight away, that's funky, you know? It's like graveyard stuff, yeah? But if you stay there for too long, it's just, well, okay, now what, you know? So, so what now is you just 
play the open string again. Alright? So, make that your default. If, you, if, if you're playing a blues and you don't know what to do next, do that. Try, now try this one. The third fret, back onto the second. like a, a Willie Johnson sort of Raikuda sort of slow graveyard thing, yeah? So the, the idea with that is you're creating some tension, mixing it up a bit, making it, giving it a little bit of colour, and then resolving, right? That's, the, that's one way to do it. You pick, pick a note that's a bit out there, play that, and then bring it home. Another way to do it, uh, is repetition variation, right? So you always want to be looking at how you can uh, interest your listener, interest yourself, you're the ones playing it, um, by repeating something and varying it. And then playing something completely different and then coming back to it, right? Themes, contrast, that sort of thing, right? So I want to have a look at a, an example of how you can use that tension in a 12 bar blues sequence with contrast and repetition, all right? So here's a little lick that you're gonna play. It goes. Just that, can you hear it? We've started up again outside, it's. So it's the third fret again, and then open. Yeah, I think everyone's got it, yeah? Now, the first three bars of your 12 bar blues, you're gonna play that, you're just gonna repeat it. And the second one, you're just gonna do the same thing, but the second one of those notes, it's gonna be open and, and a little bit in, in front, right? So, have a listen and I'll play that whole four bars. So you go, one, two, three, and the last one for variation. Right, so you, the second of those notes is open. And whether you put it exactly where I put it or not is irrelevant, right? It's just got to sound good to you. So everyone have a bit of a go at that and then we'll see if we can put it into the... I'll, st I'll play the chord over the top. It looks like I can, I can certainly hear people playing that correctly. Yeah, yeah, that's it. Yeah, that's it. Alright, now I'm going to play the bass line in time and we're all going to play it together, yeah? after that go to the four chord all right so now what I want you to do on the four chord is just play that top note with the same rhythm da, ba, and do that twice again and then go back to the first riff all right so it's going to sound like this Same rhythm. Now let's do that. Two, three, four. Alright, one more time, then we'll 
play the whole thing. Two, three, four. <laughs> Right from the top. Two, three, four. four bars when you go to the five chord you go no we won't play that just that one all right so what do I do there uh, same thing on the five and then play a downbeat in between them in between the five and the four yeah if you got frets it'll be on your sixth fret so Sort of concepts that we're, we're talking about variation repetition and um, tension release. Yeah, anyone seen these funny looking things before? Oh, other side, we might be around a little bit loose in my hands. Yeah. Uh, right. Now, the thing for mine that makes this sort of blues, boogie, rock and roll stuff that we do stand out from other things is the use of syncopation. Yeah? You know what syncopation is? Have we heard that term before? Yeah. Anyone give me a definition? When you're playing off the beat, specifically when you're accenting off the beat. So that little little blues thing that we did there, what where were we using syncopation in that? Okay, if I play it, tell me which note. Which note's off the beat? time values on, on them for now. You might remember this from school, I don't know. I, was, I on purpose, purposely didn't put any tab on this. That first one is a crotchet, just counts one, one. The next one is half a beat, counts a half. The one after that, with the little tie on it, is the syncopated note. The one that, uh, that it connects to, the hollow one, that's where your, down, your next downbeat should be. 
but we're anticipating that big strong downbeat, right? A drummer would be playing on the snare, would be going one, no, the kick drum is going to go one, two, three, four, one, two, boom, 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 boom. drums coming in right after that syncopated note. The thing that's going to make your improvisations more interesting is using syncopation. And you don't necessarily want to do it, you don't want to do it, there's no necessarily about it. You don't want to do it by analysing, you don't want to do it by tapping your feet and going, oh, I better play one on an upbeat here somewhere. You do it because you, you can recognise that, that's right, you can recognise that upbeat when you hear it and you know where you want to put it when you're playing it. That's right, Scotty. You don't want to be playing syncopated stuff because you're counting one, two, three, where's the upbeat, you'll lose it, right? You just got to, you want to play enough of this stuff so that these sort of... There's a strong downbeat. Up, down, up, down, up, up, down, right? So you can, you can, you can hear, you know when, it, when it's going to be funky just because you're putting it there, and then you look, come back later and go, oh yeah, that was an upbeat, that was a downbeat. But when you're playing and, and, and first getting used to it, you want to practice with rhythms like we just had then, that have that, that um, bring out that syncopation, right? If you have a look in the fourth bar, you can see that the second note is on an upbeat. Can you recognise that from the notation? Why is that? Because you only got a half beat for the first one. Yeah. So the first one's only half a beat. The second one must be on, on the upbeat. Does that make sense? Yeah. And you can see how through, throughout the whole thing, we've got this tie to the third beat all the way through. Because all the way through we're doing this. This bar, bar. So when I was saying before, get a groove and follow the dots, that's what I'm talking about, right? That's your basic pattern, your basic theme. If that was, say, the melody part of the song, if you were singing lyrics to that, and then you want to play a solo on it, you'd want to keep that going, and then just pick some different notes. so much time early on doing this, right? Because you need to practice and get your right hand skills up. Uh, if, you, if you're using a flat pick, um, same thing, just practice your picking, get, so get some good exercises, make sure you can actually execute what, what you're hearing and what you, want to go to, what you want to go down, yeah? So, I reckon, I want to give you guys a, sh a shot at doing that. Yeah, I'll come around and individually, everyone just have a little play, pretend you're at home in your whatever little friendly space you got at home there with the, just you and the dog yeah? um, and have a go at that rhythm. You don't even have to change chords. back to there. So, I well, like what I was doing before. Yeah? Bop. Bow.
Oh,